We got a, we got a folding table that I use. Looks pretty good, right? Sound like, oh. All right, I'm a little messy today. Don't know, um, we got some stuff to get done and I just wanna squeeze in this video about renting. For a project I just got done shooting and now this mess, this gear, all this, all this stuff has gotta go back to California, some here in St. Louis and via FedEx, via Southwest, via lots of different stuff. Let me show you what I was renting. Oh, this guy. This is uh, the new Red Gemini with uh, a set, a small set of master anamorphic lenses, accompanied by a very cheap monitor made by Field World that worked just freaking great on this project. Cheap map box. You know, when you shoot with reds, you gotta have uh, NDs. And so I had a full set of ND, 369121518. And when you're shooting with mass anamorphics that can shoot wide open, WFO 1.9, I was utilizing that a lot, this project. Um, and then one of the reasons why I got this whole kit here is because I didn't have a lot of crew and we we're doing night stuff and I wanted to put to test their new low light sensor. And the low light mode with these 1.9 anamorphics, let me just tell you that when this project drops, it's gonna be top notch. I'm not sure if I've been addressing the lens this whole time or the monitor, been looking at both, whatever. All right, anyways, renting. How to rent this camera. So this video kind of short, hopefully, I don't know. First off, you have to find a rental company. You find the rental company for this time, this camera package came from uh, Brainbox Cameras in California. I'm here in St. Louis, Brainbox had a great deal and uh, I've referred them to a friend and they in return helped me out on a discount on first time renting through them. Number two, you have to have production insurance. Most of the times you're shooting a project for a company and the company carries that. But if you're a freelance cinematographer and you're on your own, which this project necessarily was not on my own, however, I've done lots of projects you know, music videos, this or that, and like, you know, maybe it's not through a company, it's just through you. Well, you can't rent this without production insurance. Just in case it was all taken away or whatever, lost, broken, stolen, whatever, it would, they would be able, my insurance would be able to pay back exactly the cost of what I was renting. Let's pray that that would never happen, ever. Nonetheless, that insurance cost me f more than my house and my cars combined. My, my car, my wife's car, my house, all that. More than that car combined. I think I paid about four grand for my insurance. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, dude, that's like a Sony A7 III, IV, IX, or the other, whatever, I don't know. Well, I decided not to get those things and invest into insurance. And for me as a DP, I matched the right camera to the right lenses per project. Let's say I own this Gemini, and um, that would open up a lot of doors that would help me, maybe my quality. There's a lot of pros to owning cameras and your familiarity with the gear, uh, your projects, you can have a very similar, you know, color or look. I feel like there's compromises in both ends. For me, I chose renting and I rent stomach scrawling and I'm actually kind of thirsty. I'm like, be right back. Oh, I'll knock over the camera while I'm gone. None of this stuff's product endorsed. None of this, I don't have any, I don't know, I'm just drinking a little Corey. Maybe I shouldn't put this so close to the camera. Put it right there. All right, so that kind of covers why you gotta have insurance and, and how to be able to rent this stuff. And then part of renting is getting the gear in for your project and um, comes in cases. You gotta pick up the stuff from FedEx or UPS or like the airport near you. And then you get it all out and you build it. And I own a couple of things to help put this camera together. Um, I have to disassemble all that today and get it back on an airplane here shortly. And is that annoying? Um, kinda. Is it fun? Yeah. Would it be better to own it? Maybe. So I won't have to do all this. But then there's like the headache of potentially, you know, I would own this gear and people would know I would always have this gear with me or at my house or maybe I would store it somewhere else. Oh man, this, this monitor is coming off the plot. This is a cheap monitor, man. Although it's, it was super bright and everything looked good, 
hey, I was able to pull focus in bright daylight with this Master Anamorphix and this Gemini on the shoot through this uh, Field World Ultra Bright Monitor for cheap. And the director had, uh, and this is what we had for the director. You know, the go-to um, director's monitor, small HD 702, I believe, uh, with Teradek built in the back. Had this rigged up for him. It's a common thing. Although, unfortunately, Brainbox, uh, I, got, I owe them something. So here's another downside to renting. Uh, the hood, the lens hood for this thing. I had it clipped on there and it was great. And uh, it broke. The little lens hood plastic thing broke that connects here. It's kind of a pain in the ass to put on, but um, I did and it broke. So insurance either can cover that or I'll just pay out of pocket so I don't have to make any claims. Yeah, nonetheless, I, you know, I'm gonna disassemble all this gear and put it back in the boxes. One pro tip, when you get your case, when you get your box, from the rental company. You know, cut open the box, open up the box, and take a photo. It's just to see how they had the foam packed in and how they had, maybe it's like the paper or like the little bubble stuff. Look at that, take a photo of that. Peel back a layer, take another photo. Peel back another layer. Now you're at the layer where you're pulling out this case. Snip off the little spots. They have these like little uh, hooks and they always put zip ties on them. Snip that off. Take another photo. Open up the case and examine the gear and take a photo photo of what it looked like uh, opening up the case you've got paper on top and the gear organized and move the paper and the gear organized this way I can see how all the gear came and I put it right back because I'm not gonna remember how that worked one of the other things too that maybe this would help for just in case an insurance or something is your photo dates when you had it so this was Wednesday at 5 50 p.m. My shoot was the next day. One, one, one downside about renting. So I get this gear, I'm, I'm checking it on a building at 5.50 p.m. on Wednesday. My shoot was Thursday, call time 6 a.m. Um, and I wanted to have this camera built and I needed to slim all the gear down so I could put it in my car and have less stuff because I had the generator, I had the Mambo combos, I had the 2Ks, I had the lights, I had the lenses, I kept the lens. Always keep the lens in the lens case as they send it because that is very important and then a camera road shotgun with me, built ready to go, ready to shoot. All right, I'm going to maybe cut the camera, move this table, lay out the gear, get another wide shot or something, press record, speed that up, see how long it takes me to assemble all this gear and put it back, and then bring back the table, readdress the camera, and say my final words about renting, and the joy and non-joys of renting. Last pro tip before I do all of this, proper way to store the gear when you're sending it back, your lenses, put the focus to infinity, and open up your T-stop to the widest it can go, so that the aperture rings can sit far inside the lens instead of them being out and tiny, like I have like an 18 or a 22 or whatever. Always do that when you put it back in the gear so when it travels, it travels safely. Uh, the rental houses will like you for that. And check, make sure you have nothing on there and you make sure you have the right tools to clean the lenses. Uh, these lenses came in looking beautiful and I'm gonna send them back looking beautiful. I just got a message, so buddy, all right, I'll get my out later. All right, so I'm gonna do what I just said I was gonna do. And, all right. It's not overwhelming. It's just uh, a lot. One thing at a time, I suppose. Let's do ND filters. I know where those are at. Pro tip, when you're done with the case and you've checked it, it's all inspected or whatever, it's all good. Put it in like a pile or stack it somewhere else. Um, that way you can get more organized. Yeah, knock one down. It's like crossing out stuff on a checklist. It, it just helps. Back to music. All right, that's uh, good for now. My wife, I gotta go pick her up. So I'll be back. And uh, by then, we'll just finish up everything and uh, tell you about the renting. All right, I'll be back.
thing to discuss. All right. Just got back from returning all the gear. Nonetheless, it's the wrong receipt. That is the Home Depot receipt. I also went to Home Depot, had to get some uh, zip ties to, to tie all the gear together. FedEx. Shipped one case from FedEx to from St. Louis to uh, LAX. We'll get there on Tuesday, today, Sunday. $282.01. Had to add the penny on there, shouldn't they? The rest of those packages went to Southwest Cargo. And that cost nowhere near as much. $193.28 is what I'm seeing to ship all that stuff there. Anyways, $193. 28 versus 282 for one package. One package. This is one of the dilemmas about renting. However, typically, this all gets on a light item, billed to a client, and you get your money back. However, for this situation, I invested a lot of my would-be income into the gear in order to make this project look spectacular. So it's kind of one of those like spec slash uh, investment into, I don't know, the real or future projects. Moral of the story is batteries. Use your local rental house's batteries. Do not get more batteries from the place you're renting from. $282.01. Let's never forget that one cent. Just for the one package because it's batteries. Why? Why can't I just put it on the car Southwest Cargo? Why can't I just do that? I don't know. I'm still not deterred from uh, renting versus zoning, but. For you, all you out there, and you're gonna rent, consider your battery situation. And I'm not one trying to like, you know, let's say you're shooting C3 Mark II or Sony FS7 or uh, I don't know, another camera that takes an internal battery, like that sucks. You need to have a back Anton Bauer battery, and I suppose a V-mount Bauer and a V-mount lock battery. Either way, you need to have the big batteries that helps you move faster. You're not worrying about how often you have to change batteries. The bigger, it's great. I love it. It also helps balance your camera too. It's one of the pros. But $282.01? It would all be fine, like I said, if I was just billing back the client, but I've already got my paycheck and all of this money is just cut right from the paycheck. Um, Next project, on to the next one.